Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your bro, hope you're doing well. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how the zip function works in Python. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. If you wouldn't mind, please like, comment, and subscribe. One like equals one prayer for the YouTube algorithm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're talking about the zip function today. The zip function will aggregate elements from two or more iterables. Iterables are those things like lists, tuples, sets, etc. And the zip function will create a zip object with paired elements from each iterable stored in a tuple for each element within our zip object. Here's an example. Let's say that we have two different types of iterables. I have a list of usernames, and a few usernames within here are dude, bro, and mister. And I have a tuple of passwords, and I have some very secure passwords, such as password, abc123, and guest. What I would like to do is to zip elements from each iterable together so that they're in pairs. And each pair is going to be stored as a tuple within a zip object. And here's how we can do that. Let's say that we will create a zip object called users, and we will use the zip function. The zip function will take a varying amount of iterables. We're going to pass in our usernames and passwords and zip them together. So let's pass in usernames as well as passwords. And now our zip object of users is actually iterable. Zip objects are iterable, so we can use them within a for loop. So let's type for i in users and print i. And what we get is that we have a zip object of tuples and each tuple is storing each pair of elements from our two iterables. Now users is a zip object and if you don't believe me let me prove it. I'm going to print the type of users and this will print that users is indeed a zip object but you can easily convert this to a different type of iterable by using a cast. Let's say that we would like to convert our zip object into a list. So we'll surround the zip function with a cast to a list. And now the data type of users is now a list. What we have is a list of tuples, and each tuple is storing a pair of elements from our two iterables of usernames and passwords. Now currently, since we're passing in only two different iterables, we can easily make this a dictionary so that these are key value pairs. So let's cast our zip object as a dictionary. And to display all of the elements within our dictionary, all the key value pairs, we're going to change our for loop to this. For key value in users dot, and we will use the items method, print key comma value. Actually, I think I'm going to separate each of these with a colon just to make it more readable. And now when we zip these two iterables together, we end up with a dictionary of usernames and passwords, and the name of this dictionary is users. Now you're not limited to just two iterables, you can add a third iterable or more. So this time let's create a maybe a list, a list of last login dates, and I'll just call this login date equals, and why not make a list? And let's make up some dates. Let's say 1-1-2021, one, one 1-2-2022, and 1-3-2021. Okay, so let's create a zip object of users, and we're going to zip usernames, passwords, and login date. And let's iterate over this. For i in users, print i. Now we have a tuple for each element, and instead of a pair, we now have a trio, I guess, of all of the different elements from each iterable. So in conclusion, the zip function will aggregate elements from two or more iterables and create a zip object with paired or grouped together elements stored in a tuple for each element within our zip object. So that is the zip function. If you would like a copy of this code, I will post this to the comment section down below. And well, yeah, that's how the zip function works in Python.